Welcome once again. This is Pinnacle Professional College, and today we'll be bringing you another lecture on strategic case study. As you all know, the pre scene material for March 2023 examinations is finally out. And today I'll be walking you through, as usual, um, analyzing this pre scene material bringing out the salient points in order for you to understand exactly how to approach this case and you know possible potential questions so if you have if you're ready just grab your notebook just grab your pen because i'll be talking about very very important things you need to know while you go through this case as you know my approach to analyzing this case is using a sentence by sentence analysis um, to give us an indication of how best to approach this case and, um, and understand it. So let's move straight into it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. And please um, share with other people who might be taking this exam as well. So today <clears throat> we'll be talking about La Paz Community Hospital. La Paz Community Hospital. Now, when I read this La Paz Community Hospital, the first thing that comes into my mind is the industry, <clears throat> is the industry. So we are operating within the healthcare industry. That's the first thing to note. That was the first thing to note, right? We, we do not know yet if it's a public uh, hospital or a private hospital. So we would find out as we go through this case. So the La Paz Community Hospital, was incorporated in September 2003. Now, when you hear the word incorporated, what comes to mind? When you hear the word incorporate, incorporated, it simply means, when you hear the word incorporated, it simply means the points at which the company was formed into a legal corporation, right? Incorporates incorporate when it became legally existent when the company became legally existent so that's what we mean by incorporated right so incorporation is basically the process of setting up a business as its own legal entity the key phrase here is legal by you know registering it with you know the official body for registering companies so that's what we mean by incorporation, incorporation. So this gives you an idea into the time it was incorporated, right? The time it was incorporated. It was incorporated in what, September 2003, right? September 2003, very, very important. Very, very important. The timing of incorporation is key because if we want to understand what are the possible circumstances Right. What are the possible circumstances surrounding that time that can influence the company? So don't forget that you know every company uh, exists within a context, within a framework, within an external environment, and is influenced by times and seasons. So what happens during that time is very, very key. Right. Another key thing you'd see here is the word limited. The La Paz Com Community Hospital Limited, right? When we say a limited company, a limited company is basically um, a general form of incorporation where the amount of liability is limited, right? It basically means that it's a type of incorporation that limits the amount of liability that is undertaken by the company's owners or shareholders. Right, so what does this mean? That the liability of the shareholders are limited. So in the case of a bankruptcy or in the event of a bankruptcy, the personal assets of the shareholders will not be recovered to pay for the debts. So the liability is limited in that sense. The liability of the shareholders is limited. That's why it's called a limited company. A limited company because the liability 
it limits the amount of liability undertaken by the company shareholders. I hope that makes sense. So in September 2003, this is when the company was formed. This is when the company was formed. Very, very crucial. Very, very crucial, right? You know, obviously the 2000s is when, you know, we had a huge revolution around social media, you know, even rapid advancement in technology, et cetera, right? And this company or this hospital was incorporated in September 2003 under the Companies Act, under the Companies Act. So you see, we are being told here how it was registered, how it became a legal existence. So if you've not read, um, and I, I'm not saying read then, you have to read the entire Companies Act, right? But you need to have a fair overview of what the Companies Act is about, right? So the Companies Act, basically Act 179, um, is very crucial when it comes to you know organizations. It talks about several issues, several issues regarding the institution, regarding the operation of companies. So um, what I'll do is, because there are lots of things to talk about when it comes to the Companies Act, um, I'll highlight some key things that the Companies Act talks about. So it talks about the commencement of companies. It talks about interpretation of the act, right? It talks about the application of the act. Um, it talks about the types of companies. It talks about uh, pre-incorporation matters. It talks about the formation of companies. It talks about um, the powers of companies. It talks about the membership of companies. Literally everything surrounding the commencement, incorporation, existence, and operation of companies is found within the Companies Act. So it was incorporated as a private clinic. It was in incorporated as a private clinic. Now, when we say a company is private, we know from this that it's different from a public company, obviously, right? It's different from a public company. So what's a public company? A public company is a company that has its shares traded on an exchange, right? By private company, right? It's quite different because it does not have its shares traded publicly, right? And it's usually the shareholders are limited to 50. And so that's a private co company, a private clinic. So as a private clinic, um, that's what we need to know. And the commerce health service delivery on 2nd May 2004. So you see the time of incorporation and the time of commencement are two different things or, or can be two different things. So you have incorporation number one and commencement number two. It's very, very important. So even though they incorporated in September 20, 2003, they began service delivery in Second May 2004. So you see, you are trying to get out the key information from the text. Now, this is a hospital, right? So, and the service is more of like a societal service, right? Taking care of sick people, a hospital. So that's something you should have at the back of your mind. Um, are they charging expensive fees? you know, to take care of patients, um, is their fee, is their service efficient, you know, things like that you should start thinking about as you go along. The main facility is located at Abekala Pass along the Anohuma Street near La Pass, New Market. So this is the location. Yeah, this is the location, right? It seems like it was initially a private clinic, so they started small. Clinic is not necessarily a hospital. Clinic is much smaller. So um, they started at Bekan La Paz. That's the location um, near the La Paz New Market. LCH expanded from the threshold of a clinic to become a fully-fledged hospital in 2006. Become a fully 
fledged hospital in 2006. So look at the journey, right? Look at the journey. One of the things you should know is, you know, you should be looking into is the company life cycle. The company life cycle, you have the you know, introduction of the company, of the growth of the company, of the maturity of the company, of the decline of the company. Now we know that incorporation began in 2003, commencement began in 2004, and then in 2006, they became a fully fledged hospital. That seems like a good progression, right? So LCH expanded from the threshold of a clinic to become a fully fledged hospital in 2006. That's in just about, you know, maybe like a year and a half or close to two years, something like that. On 29th November 2008, the hospital annex opened at Christian Clay Junction in response to calls and demands by residents, traditional and opinion leaders at Kiseman and Christian Village near Achimota, and business leaders within the community. You realize that? So on 29 November 2008, there were calls by you know, all kinds of people for a hospital annex, right? And there were demands from these people, right? So if you look into this, you would realize that um, this, you know, this looks at the stakeholders. So it's this, this is pressure coming from stakeholders to, you know, to kind of like get a hospital in their area, right? Because if you look at residents, opinion leaders, these are all stakeholders. <clears throat> and one of the things you should know when studying the case study by now, you should know about the, um, you should know about the stakeholder matrix and that they are internal and external stakeholders. And the internal stakeholders are those within the company, the external stakeholders are those outside the company. And all those people have a certain level of power and interest that impacts the company, right? So if I were you, I'll note that down. I'll note the stakeholder matrix down because this is a hospital, right? And potentially what I foresee is some kind of um, rift between the hospital and stakeholders, right? So I would pen down the stakeholder matrix. That would be very, very important. So it's interesting that this hospital has grown and now has a nexus um, and it's able to, um, it's able to, you know, expand its operation in that sense. So both branches, the main and the annex, have grown steadily to become 62 and 22 bed capacity facilities, respectively. So you see some growth here. So, like I said, in regards to the in company life cycle, right here, you can see some growth. You can see some good. So that's very, very important. That's very, very important. Now, because you know that this is the healthcare industry, right? This is the healthcare industry. There are a couple of things that might be useful to understand. Might be useful to understand. In the healthcare industry, there are several um you know, there are several arms, there are several things that, or several facets when it comes to the healthcare industry that you might find interesting to know, I'm thinking. So there are certain trends, right, that you would realize in the healthcare industry. So one of the key trends in the healthcare industry is health equity, is health, e health equity. So um, what is health equity? You know, making sure that everyone gets access to healthcare. Another trend in the healthcare industry is mental health and well-being. Right. Another, you know, another trend in the healthcare industry is, you know, futuristic technologies in the medical science area. So there are many trends. Another trend in the healthcare industry is what we call ESG, which is environmental, social, and governance issues. Another trend in the healthcare industry is digital healthcare, right? Or digital transformation when it comes to healthcare. So these are all new trends in the healthcare industry that you might um, 
want to know. So please keep these at the back of your mind because you would want to know when the where the industry is evolving towards and how La Paz Community Hospital can align themselves in that regard. So every company, every hospital, every organization would have a vision and a mission. So let's look into that of LCH. Um, so the vision for LCH is to strive to become the leading private hospital in Ghana and West Africa. The leading private hospital in Ghana and West Africa. So this is their goal. Take note that their goal is not to become the lead, it's very specific. It's not to become the leading public hospital or the leading hospital. Right. Their goal is to become the leading private hospital in Ghana and West Africa. Is this achievable? Yes. Um, as we go along the line, we would see you know, how achievable this is. Now, let's look at the mission. The mission is to provide, so the vision is the future state of the organization. The mission is the purpose of the organization, the reason for its existence. The reason for its existence. So to prov the mission is to provide high quality medical services to its valued customers at the least possible cost without compromising on quality. Without compromising on quality. The mission of the hospital has been designed to provide high quality medical services to its valued clients at the least possible cost without compromising on quality. And this is anchored on a vision that progressively seeks to become one of the leading hospitals in Ghana. Right. So this is the mission of um, the hospital is to provide quality service at the least possible cost without compromising on quality. So it sounds like a very, very good mission. <clears throat> a very, very good mission. All right. So it's very, very important. Very, very important. So you need to know the mission. Once you understand the mission, the mission and the vision, you understand what the company stands for. All right. You understand what the company stands for. And um, be able to better evaluate the company in that sense. In that sense, so it's very, very important to understand um, something. Um, it's very, very important to understand something. You know, I'm sure as you've gone through your notes, you've seen something around value for money, right? Um, value for money is usually related to not for profit organizations, I must say. It's related to not-for-profit organizations. There's a private organization and they exist for profit. But in the value for money equation, there are, there are three E's, which is economy, efficiency, and effectiveness, right? Economy, efficiency, and effectiveness. You know, efficiency, um, economy basically deals with, you know, the lowest possible cost efficiency um, basically deals with, you know, making sure that you are able to manage resources properly to be able to have the best possible outputs. Then effectiveness deals on deals with the results, the results that you get. So that's the three is when it comes to not-for-profit organization. I, I should say that value for money is for not for profit organizations. LCH is a private hospital, but I'm just using that as a point to show you that, you know, LCH's mission is to provide quality medical service at the least possible cost, right? So economy here, right? Economizing in that sense. That's all I'm trying to highlight. Invariably, the vision and mission are driven by the following strategic goals. The application of sound managerial practice, the deployment of competent and highly motivated workforce, the total commitment to excellent customer care, the utilization of efficient and reliable hospital information and communication systems, and the regular use of state-of-the-art medical technology to sustain a consistently well-maintained infrastructure and to leverage on results. So these are the These are the you know, strategic goals. Now, if you look clearly at the strategic goals, you would see something very interesting, right? 
So you will see people underline the strategic goals. There are goals around people, there are goals around technology, there are goals around structure, right? There are goals around um, customer care and ICT. So you have goals around these areas, right? And one of the most important models when it comes to um, organizations is what we call uh, the McKinsey Sevenness Framework, right? You are looking at different parts of the organization and how best you can make it work. So the McKinsey Sevenness Framework looks at the strategy of the organization, the structure of the organization, the systems of the organization, the staff, which is the people, the style of the organization, the skills of the organization, and the shared values of the organization. So these are the seven things that come together to form effective organizations. In La Paz Community Hospital key, hospital, Hospitals Keys, a lot of these um, goals have been underlined in McKinsey's Sevenness model. So let's move on to the strategy statement. The strategy statement. So the strategy consists of carefully coordinated business activities such as application of sound managerial practices, deployment of competent and highly motivated workforce. Right. But even before I go into that, right? You know, I've done several lectures around. Um, around, you know, strategy formulation, I would entreat you to go and you know, revise on that strategy formulation where you want to understand strategic assessment, strategic evaluation, strategic choice. Right. It will be important to un uh, understand these things. All right, so you can see clearly that, you know, they have a strategy statement. The strategy consists of carefully coordinated business activities, such as the application of sound managerial practices, deployment of competent workforce, total commitment to customer care, efficient, reliable hospital information and communication system, regular use of state-of-the-art medical technology, sustenance of consistently well-maintained infrastructure, and leveraging on results-oriented clinical service models to promote a favorable hospital image. So we are basically, it's basically repeating the strategy goals that we just talked about, right? So that is a strategy statement. That's a strategy statement. Now, if you look at the strategic goals, right? And you look at the McKinsey 7S model, right? Do you think strategy has been talked about? Yes. Do you think there was a mention of structure? Yes, because it says to sustain a consistently well-maintained infrastructure. What about systems? Systems have been talked about, information and communication systems, staff, which are people, right? A highly motivated workforce. What about style? What do you think? Do you think style has been talked about? You know, so when we talk about organizational style, what do we mean? I'm sure some people, you know, some people might be more wondering, you know, what's organizational style? What's organizational style? When we say organizational style, it simply means, you know, just like as a human, in fashion, you have different styles, right? If you take, um, if you take, um, what do you call it? If you take a dress, there are different styles. And organizations have different um, styles in that sense, different styles in that sense, different ways of managing the affairs. That's what we mean by style, right? So when we say, um, the, when we talk about the organizational style, it's the different ways that an organization would manage its affairs, right? So they are function-driven firms. So in certain firms, it's function-driven. So you would have functions. The function could be engineering, 
A function could be marketing. A function could be manufacturing. A function could be HR. A function could be technology, etc. You could also have matrix organizations, right? So a matrix in a matrix organization, you have um, both. Um, when we say matrix, it's a combination of both projects and functions. So in this kind of organization, there's kind of a, like a collaboration between project managers and functional managers, right? It's working together to achieve the results of the company. Then you have project-oriented organization where you know, activities within the organization are set up as projects and people are put onto those projects. And once that project is executed, a different project is moved on to. It's also called a projectized firm. A projectized firm. So there are different organizational styles. So in these strategic goals, um, it is not clear that we see the style here. It is not readily clear, right? That we see the style here, but I'm sure as we go along, we'll definitely see the style. So, and then we have skills, right? Skills is talking about competence, competence. So the deployment of competent people, that's skills or sound managerial practice, that skills, right? They also have shared values, right? We are told about the shared values, um, leveraging our results, leveraging our results, oriented clinical service models to promote a favorable corporate image. This is something that will be shared throughout the organization or throughout the hospital, right? So um, the only thing that um, I think was not captured directly here is the style, is the style. Um, somebody might argue that the style could be commitment to excellent customer care, um, but that seems more to me like a, a shared value. Um, but I think as we go along, the style might come up. The style might come up. So the hospital is tiered by a four member board of directors and supported by a resilient management team. Right, a resilience management team. So uh, four members, the board of directors. So here we might be moving to, we might be talking about maybe corporate governance. Anytime I see board of directors, my mind goes straight to corporate governance. So please know that. Now let's move on to services rendered. Now don't forget about the four piece. Right? Don't forget about the four piece of marketing. So the four piece of marketing are products, right? You have place, you have price, you have promotion, right? We know the place. We've been told the location of the hospital or hospitals, right? Um, we've been told it's at La Paz and one is a Christian village, etc. So we've been told these things. Um, now, when we move on to products, um, we know the healthcare service delivery, but this portion will will let us know more and more about, um, yeah, about the product. So the services the hospital renders includes pharmaceuticals, imaging, radiography, medical laboratory, dental, optical, surgical, and anesthesia. Others are ENT. I think ENT means ear, nose, and throat. Um, physician, specialist, obstetrics, gynecology, maternity, neonatal, pediatrics, and dietary therapy. The rest are orthopedic, physiotherapy, urology, neurology, clinical psychology, dermatology, IVF, test tube babies, and emergency or ambulance services. So you see, um, these are the services now. There are lots of services here. Right. There are a lot of services here. And obviously, I don't think these are all the healthcare services. So this is what they are intending on offering. Or this is what they are actually offering. So the branches are both equipped with modern laboratory, computerized pharmacy, modern x-ray, maternity and theater facilities with a staff strength of 250 operating at various workstations. So you see. So they have modern laboratory, computerized, you know, they seem to be technologically savvy, and theater with a staff strength of 250 people. 
Uh, so that's a he, you know relatively huge staff strength. Indeed, the hospital offers a wide range of general and specialist services tailored to present present resilient health benefits. They tailor to present resilient health benefits. Now, one of the things I would like to know is the staff that they have, are they hired on part-time basis or full-time basis, you know, etc. I, I want to I'm hoping to see more around their acquisition strategy for you know staff and for people. Very, very important. Now, um, as you are going through this, just you know, don't forget that many times you are running through these cases, there are certain models which are called key models that you need to keep at the back of your mind. Right, number one is SWOT analysis. So as you are going through, you should see, you should be noting down strengths. And as you are going through, I've noted a lot of strengths. Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, right? So a strength is that um, at least they have a goal of providing excellent customer care. And that's a strength. So as you're going through, you need to jot down um, Basically, do a SWOT analysis. Another model that you also need to think about is the stakeholder matrix. Another model that you also need to know is the company life cycle. Another model that you also need to know is the um, tester framework. Right. So all these things are important. Now, the tester framework I've talked about extensively in my previous videos. Um, but as we go through this case, um, it will become increasingly important to understand exactly what we mean by that. So the hospital treats 400 cases daily on the average and attends to private individual subscribers on the National Health Insurance Scheme, Private Health Insurance Scheme, as well as international health insurance organizations such as Nextcare, Cigna, and Aetna, AET, and A International. So there's a kind of like a diverse customer base here, 400 cases daily, 400 cases daily. That's interesting, right? Um, so I have not seen the case yet. I'm just reading it. But um, one of the things I'm potentially foreseeing, which I might be totally wrong on, is you know pressure on their facilities. You know, something happening like um, COVID or something or some kind of disease that places pressure on them. So 400 cases daily is quite huge um, for the size of the, you know, also the size of the hospital. Um, it's relatively huge in my opinion, but you know, we are told that they attend to private individual subscribers. So there's some kind of relationship between them and insurance companies as well, and insurance companies as well. So that's also something that has to be noted. That's also something. That's something that has to be noted. That's something that has to be noted. So. Um, one of the key things to understand here is that as you are going through these cases, you know, take note of their numbers, 250 staff strength, right? So what is the implication here? They have a huge staff strength. Um, what happens if their staff strength gets sick, you know, if people resign, if people decide to leave, you know, what happens, right? So you are thinking about worst and best case scenarios. They have 400 cases daily. What if it increases to 800? Do you have the capacity for it? You know, these are the questions you should be asking, asking yourself. Now, quality has increasingly become a hallmark of the hospital. And as technology is notably a catalyst aiding effectiveness and efficiency, the hospital has largely digitized operations and services and leveraged on the systems, right? to maintain established standards. 
right? So here yeah, you are being told of technology. Now, what did I say? I said, always remember the pistol framework. The pistol framework has political factors. They have economic factors, social, cultural factors, technological factors, you see, technology. Very, very important. So LCH, which is La Paz Community Hospital, is ahead of the curve when it comes, seems to be ahead of the curve when it comes to technology, digitization, and leveraging of systems. It also harnesses the expertise of qualified practitioners and leverages technology to achieve remarkable results. Very, very interesting. The track record of the hospital has been remarkable thereby attracting various prestigious national and international awards as testament to its outstanding performance. So the reputation of this hospital is growing, right? The reputation of this hospital is growing, which is a very, very good thing, which is a very, very good thing, right? Which is a very, very good thing. So. Achieve here, yeah, you are being told of the achievement awards. There are many, right? There are many, so there's no need to memorize these awards. But what you need to know is that the reputation of the company, um, the reputation of the company is, is going well. It's going well. Very, very important. So, achievement awards received include the Gold Award in Medical Health Services in October 2013. Um, don't forget that they were incorporated in 2003, so 10 years after. Right? You have the Glyco Healthcare Services Provider Award, 2015 International Quality Crown Award landing. 2016 Excellence Award, Ghana Medical Association, 2017 West Africa Clinical Alliance Award. Um, several awards, several awards, right? So I do not want to mention each of them. Um, what you need to know that these were national and international awards. So it's clear that the performance of this company is going really well and they are being recognized for it. Now, Let's move on to the laboratory department. Now, if you have any questions concerning this analysis, right, please leave it in the comment section and I'll definitely take a look at it. Now, the laboratory department, the laboratory department of LCH is responsible for testing various samples for medical diagnosis. So now you are looking at the, the different departments, all right? So it seems to me that this is a function-driven organizational style. You know, when you're talking about the McKinsey 7S model, one of the things we mentioned that we probably did not notice was around the style. Right? And they are function-driven organization. This seems to be one of them. So they have the laboratory department. They'll have other departments as well. But the laboratory department of LCH is responsible for testing various samples for medical diagnosis, treatment, monitoring, management, and screening in the hospital. The department also plays a major role in the facility's scientific and public health-related issues. The lab department is currently made up of four main testing centers, namely the main laboratory, right, at the main La Paz Community Hospital, Paradise Diagnostic Center, our next laboratory at La Paz Community Hospital and Molecular Diagnostic Center. So there are four main testing centers that the lab department comprises of. Very, very important. Now, why are they taking the pains to go through the laboratory department? Right? Because quality in the laboratory department is critical. It's critical. The laboratory department currently has a total number of 27 technical and non-technical staff led by a medical laboratory consultant. Led by a medical laboratory consultant. Hmm, so that's interesting. This led by twin, it currently has a total of 27 
staff. Right. So in the question I'll be asking myself, is the number of staff okay? The staff distributed in the four main testing centers of the lab as follows. The main lab has three. Um, and then, so main laboratory, three medical laboratory scientists, seven medical laboratory technicians, and four non-technical staff. This is for the main lab. Hmm, that's interesting. Because the question I'm asking myself here is the 27 across the four testing centers enough? 27 people. Is that enough? Right. And then I think if we go to the annex laboratory, you have two medical laboratory staff scientists, two medical laboratory technicians, and one non-technical staff. Therefore, paradise, we have three medical laboratory scientists, two medical laboratory technicians, and one non-technical staff. And the molecular, molecular diagnostic center, you have one medical laboratory scientist and one technician. That's very interesting. Now, we cannot talk about, well, let me note something here. We cannot talk about people without talking about training and development. So to be interesting to see what they have in terms of training and development, development. but you know, my question here is around the adequacy of the staff for the laboratory department, because you do not want things to go wrong in the lab. Right? Things go wrong, it can create a whole lot of problems. But we are told each testing center and how many staff. So for instance, for the main laboratory, if you add three to seven to four, right, you would have 14. So there are 14 in the main laboratory, which is almost half, it's more than half actually, more than half of the total staff and the other three centers share, you know, 13 staff, right? So as to whether this is enough, right? You know, the number of people or the number of staff is enough. It's something we'd find out. The molecular diagnostic center continues to offer new molecular diagnostic services such as hepatitis C, viral load, respiratory virus, viruses, et cetera. So you see, this molecular diagnostic center, they are offering new molecular diagnostic services, which means kind of more work, you know, and they only have one scientist and one technician. So I wonder how they are, they, they are able to cope, right? But let's see. So you see training, see, you can't talk about people without talking about training. So let's look into training. So the lab department is well organized and requires regular training to keep the technical staff up to date on modern trends in the lab technician profession. Training program for the staff has been very regular, which is a good thing, right? The recent training covered patient preparation, sample taking, analysis and reporting on lipid profile. So there's continuous professional development, continuous professional development. And that's what you'd want as an organization. You want your people to, you know, to be able to understand um, the trends in, in their field, to be able to be upskilled in their field. Very, very important. Now let's move on to equipment, equipment, equipment. Uh, um, a chemiluminescent hormonal and immunoassay analyzer was acquired to improve on the quality of hormonal and immuno, immunoassay analysis, right? So, the chemiluminescent method is the latest, most reliable, and best method for amino acids. So somebody might be asking, you know, somebody might be asking, what's the meaning of these long words? I'm not a, I'm not a doctor. So why are these plenty, plenty long words? As for, I'm sure, um, I'm sure hormonal, you probably most likely understand it. But the other words in in there might be might be creating a lot of problems for you. So let's look at some of the let's look at some of the 
terms, right? Let's look at some of the terms. So, immuno assay is simply IA. They call it IA in the medical pro profession, right? It's, it's a diagnostic assay. So what does this mean? It simply means it's basically a test that measures the concentration of a molecule in a solution. It simply measures the concentration of a molecule in a solution by using an antibody. This is not a science exam. This is not a science exam, so there's no need to go and memorize this. You just need to know what an immunoassay is. That's all. It's, it basically measures the presence of a molecule in a solution. The presence of a molecule in a solution through the use of an antibody. That's all you need to know. That's all you need to know. So, yeah. That's all you need to know. So, when we say assay or assay, whatever you want to call it, A-S-S-A-Y, that word simply means to determine the content or quality of. So immunoassay is basically determining the presence or concentration of a molecule in a solution. Right. Like I said, this is not a science exam, so please don't worry yourself with some of these terminology. But it's good to have a fair, fair understanding. And you another big, big word there is um, chemiluminescent. Now, I'm sure if you hear the word luminous, you will know that you know, you know it relates to light, right? So chemiluminescence simply means the emission of light because of a chemical reaction the emission of light because of a chemical reaction. So that's some little signs there for you. So they, they purchased this analyzer that was acquired to improve on the quality of hormonal analysis, hormonal immunoassay analysis, right? The chemin luminescent method is the latest multilambo and best method for immunoassay. So, so you seem to be ahead of the curve. On the 14th of December, 2020, the lab had a meeting for all laboratory staff at the main laboratory. The meeting was chaired by the lab manager, which is, who is Dr. Idris Muhammad. We saw deliberations among staff to look at ways to improve lab services and also enhance the quality of their work. So you see, I mentioned this earlier. When it comes to the laboratory department, quality is key. Quality is key. Quality is key. Now, anytime departments go on meetings, that's a good thing. But you need to know the outcome of the meeting. Right? And then if I were you, I'll think about the issues that were raised at the meeting and the strategies you can form to solve those issues. Very, very important. Very, very important. So they had a meeting on the 14th of December around and had deliberations on how they improve the quality of their work. Now, I have a video on um, key models, strategic models to be known before going into the exam. If you haven't looked into that, please look at it because it's very, very important. Now, let's look at some of the deliberations. Let's look at some of the deliberations. Number one was issuing of patient reports. Issuing of patient reports. So you are looking at a system or a database, patient system or database. Now, staff were mandated to continue to send patient reports to the ARM system to the doctors. This was done to improve the accuracy and precision of the lab results. Obviously, you don't want a situation where you send patients a lab report um, to the wrong doctor, right? 
You don't want situations like that, or you don't want to mess up people's lab results. It creates a whole lot of problems. So the staff were mandated to send lab reports through what we call the HAMS system. The HA, the HAMS system. Very, very important. So please know that um please note that the patient reports are very, 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 very important. Very, very important. So when we say HAMS, HAMS, what do we mean? HAMS is simply Hospital Availability Management System. HAMS is a software. You know, a hospital um, Sorry, it's not, sorry, it should be healthcare assessment and management system. Healthcare assessment and management system. Healthcare assessment and management system. Very, very important. Um, the same harms could also mean hospital availability management system, but that's in a different context. I mean, this context, I believe it means hospital healthcare assessment and management system. Healthcare management, healthcare assessment and management system. Now let's move on to point two, turn around time. Laboratory staff were admonished. Now, so I'm sure you've heard of critical success factors. Critical success factors are things that need to go right for an organization to outcompete and other organization, other organizations. So these are critical issues that they are mentioning here. So turnaround time, lab staff were admonished to communicate efficiently and well with patients regarding the duration of their test. Should there be a delay in a patient resource, staff were asked to address it appropriately and in an articulated manner to the patient. So turnaround time was very, very important. So that's a critical success factor. So a KPI will be to look at the time between um, the time frame between when a patient's test was done and when they get their results. Number three is continuing professional development. We talked about this already. So staff were always encouraged, also encouraged to always seek to acquire new knowledge and expand on their professional know-how. Staff were asked to read widely and take short courses to improve themselves and learn new fields in the lab technology, right? Even though there's an encouragement, not all staff might do it. So sometimes the organization must initiate this. Very, very important. Number four is customer care. Staff were also asked to take customer issues more seriously and they deliver the best service. So you have customer care and then you have communication strategies. So there should be communication flow between the lab staff, the patients and the doctors to, if I'm thinking about strategies to help La Paz Community Hospital to move forward, I will think about an efficient database because if there are issues with the harm system, it's going to create a problem. I will think about speed in delivering results, speed and quality in delivering results. These are all strategies that I'll think about. Continuing professional development. The organization can incentivize their people to learn more by probably funding it, funding courses for them. Customer care, what strategies can I put around customer care? To possibly have a customer care desk is a typical example. Communication flow among the lab staff, the patients and the doctors, right? Um, is there a certain communication tool we can use, some kind of communication software we can use to ensure that flow of information between these three parties? You need to think of strategies around um, these deliberation points. Very, very important. Very, very important. So we've come to page three today, right? Obviously, there are 12 pages, right? So it might take us about four days to cover this. Four days to cover this, um, hopefully.
Hopefully we can use three days, but let's see how it goes. In our next session, we'll be talking about growth and prospects, growth and prospects, right? And so um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so, share this, friend, share this video with friends and see you tomorrow at 4 p.m. Thank you, bye-bye.